hands of those who dedicate their lives to creating remarkable food, I give you a mouth-on approach to Quebec City's culinary culture. I want to give you an insider's view of these local friendly places that fuel my passion for Quebec City and the people behind its gastronomy. We'll eat, drink, travel through flavors, take some downtime, and learn how to cook. For the first episode, we're kicking things off with the vibrant Limoilou. Hi, my name is Alison Van Rassel. Quebec City is my home. As a food journalist, I've eaten in every single restaurant in the city. So let me be your foodie guide to Quebec City. Rotisserie de Quartier is in the heart of Limoilou, La Troisième Avenue. It is nowhere near the traditional barbecue chicken. They serve up a generous, locally raised, grain-fed chicken that slowly rotates for two hours in a traditional French rotisserie. It is flavored with, believe it or not, a variety of 12 different herbs and spices. Philippe Emmanuel Favron is one of the three owners who operate this very inclusive, family-friendly restaurant, which reflects the strong sense of the community of Limoilou. I mean, look at Philippe's beautiful smile. How welcoming can it get? Philippe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I sort of feel like you're putting a little bit of that Limoilou vibe in your cuisine, right? Yeah, definitely. It was part of the main project, really important for us to be part of that vibe, to be part of the neighborhood, to be part of the community too. So the restaurant, it's family oriented, uh, but here we're serving food for the kids that has the same quality as the one for the, the adults. As the neighbor is really inclusive, it was really important for us to include that in the in the thinking of the of the cards and the thinking of uh, the menu and uh, the way we were we're going to present it to the to the clients mm -hmm. us is a rotisserie yeah definitely. you're working with chicken why why chicken uh, actually it's uh, the idea came from my associates Penelope and Lucie uh, they're really like into chicken they talked to me about uh, the project of that chicken restaurant the kind of restaurant that you see more in Montreal, like a Portuguese yeah. chicken mm -hmm. kind of restaurant. And then uh, we came into the idea that it has to be like a really inclusive. So uh, yes, there is chicken, but there is two vegetarians meals. So it plays a little too with this, the, the, the sound of us, which is in French, a bone, but in English it for the, ter the terms all together. Tell me a little bit about those flavors then, because if you're going to be inclusive, then you have to pretty much speak to everyone. So mm -hmm. were you restrictive or were you really open-minded and you went all over the place? Because we're talking about chicken, so. Yeah, but yeah, the thing was for a long time, chicken has been like a typical flavor profile. That's barbecue chicken. Let's do this. And everybody's trying to copy that flavor with the same flavorless french fries, the same flavorless, flavorless sauce yeah. with the same big amount of salt. It was in important to us to renew that uh, kind of uh, vibe of the chicken, barbecue chicken. So for us, it was all about taking the time and using the right in ingredients in the right proportion. And when you do that, I think it binds everybody all together. I think there is one secret ingredient. Well, I don't know if it's an ingredient, but there's a secret technique yeah. to the chicken here, and it's your rotisserie. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the story behind that. Yeah, actually, uh, I remember when I, I traveled throughout France, uh, there was those little open market uh, on every Sunday where the people, they bring all, all their vegetables from the farms, and there's always that truck, it's where there's that big, vertical rotisserie where people, they're just cooking chicken all day long and they put it on a big table in front of it. The rotisserie that we bought, it's uh, imported from France. The main 
thing about it, it's first, it's vertical. Yeah. So when you cook the chicken, the one from the top will be uh, sharing its flavor with the one that cooks just underneath them. And then we'll do so and so until we get to the, our second weapons of choice here at the Rotisserie, which is uh, the potatoes that we cook underneath it, uh, those chickens. I know, and those potatoes are to die for because <laughs> it can sound a little bit gross, but no, it's like drenching up the fat and grilling at the same time. And there's so much flavor in that. Yeah. And that also is another, as you said, yeah. weapon of destruction. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> oh, another. no, a weapon of seduction. Of no, seduction, <laughs> definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, And there's a lot of uh, collagen, color collagen, so yeah. it's, it's good for the, the skin. So. special uh, kind of uh, trick that we do here. If you come to the restaurant and buy our whole chicken for a takeout, yeah. we're giving you a little bags with a special ingredient in there, and then, uh, and then a little recipe, and then as you eat home with your friends, you keep the bones on the side, mm -hmm. throw it in a little pot, garlics, a little carrots, a little onions, the, the little powder that you add in there, water and a little white wine, simmer for a couple hours, and then you get like the perfect broth or a sauce base for uh, your meal tomorrow. Wow, so we can bring a little bit of us mm -hmm. at home. So would you be willing to share a few secrets with yeah. me, with us, to yeah, maybe get those techniques at home? Yeah. So we're going to get into uh, the process of brining, which is the key uh, feature of our chicken, which gives it the, the more um, flavor profile and then uh, keep it really moistened after the cooking. So uh, what's a brine? It's a mix of different spices, herbs, sugar, and salt. Uh, here at us, we're using 12 different uh, herbs and spices. Uh, mainly, uh, we've got uh, lemon, a lot of fresh thyme, sumac, which is uh, uh, reddish uh, flower pistils from Middle Eastern cuisine. And then we're adding to that uh, more secret ingredients that I won't uh, disclose to you today. So uh, we're using all those uh, ingredients and uh, throw it in a steaming hot water pot. Uh, have it uh, cooked for about an hour and a half. Uh, we're gonna have uh, that mixture uh, cool down in the fridge. And then we're gonna throw the chicken in there and brining for a minimum six hours. And then uh, we're gonna apply to it uh, the dry uh, rub. We're gonna let it sit there for another 12 hour minimum and it's gonna be ready to go uh, in the rotisserie. And uh, we're gonna cook it like uh, really slow so it gets really crispy and it, it stays uh, really uh, moistened. So for about uh, two hours. So that's where all the magic happens. Philippe and I are taking to the streets of Limoilou because I asked him to show me another business he appreciates in the neighborhood. Well, with its many green spaces, parks, and a river, Limoilou is a multi-ethnic, working-class neighborhood of Quebec City. Here's a fun historical fact about Limoilou. In 1535-36, Jean Cartier sailed to Nouvelle-France and spent that winter on the north shore of La Rivière Saint-Charles. That's the current site of the Parc Cartier Brébeuf. Now, the famous explorer lived the last years of his life at Manoir Limoilou in Brittany. Hence the name of Limoilou. Philippe takes me to La Récolte. It's a no-waste independent business where every single product is sold by bulk. So we got to La Récolte. Why? Why are we here, Phil? Actually, uh, because uh, I felt that uh, as a restaurateur in the restaurant industry, we're, use we're uh, facing um, a situation where we're receiving a lot of product over package. We're uh, having a lot of boxes, a lot of plastic wraps yeah. and stuff. So uh, to me and for the restaurants too is a, a little concern. So we're trying to recuperate as much as we can, uh, do a little compost when we can, but uh, we can't do much more than that. So uh, La Récolte for me is on that vibe, zero waste, uh, zero uh, packaging. And uh, the first time I, I got in there, it felt like a little public market. Kids running around, there were people talking about uh, what they did yesterday and uh, what show they went, and uh, 
it feels like really like the more do alike. Exactly, it transcends. So that, it transcends the us that you were referring yeah, to, the, the yeah. neighborhood and the vibe. Mm -hmm. Very multicultural. A lot of different products too. Yeah. What What do you like to come and get for yourself at home? Uh, the, the, definitely, the, the, they get a nice uh, package of oils, and then for the nuts, they get like plenty of them. Actually, it's, it's, the, the thing is, I like th those open markets. You just came in here with no list or no nothing. You just walk around, yeah. check the things. Because they got like, I, I just saw they had a special kind of linguinis made of um, flour made of insects. Insects, I know. So, so, yeah. so you, you can get like, like buzz by something you just walked yeah. around. So that's well. That's speaking of buzz and speaking of chicken, because I, I'm, I'm sure you have to get back to work. I, there's this question that's in my mind. I'm sure that it's in it's a lot of viewers' mind. Is why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to check on that one. So I'm gonna go right now. Thank you so Thank you much. Very much. Thank have you. Have a nice day. All right. Bye -bye. See you around. I'm gonna yeah. get to shopping now. All <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye, Phil. From La Récolte, just cross the street to La Folle Fourchette, where cooking classes are currently underway. Look how intimate it is. I love that people are actually getting their hands dirty. Sianne Tremblay, she's one of the two owners of this kitchen tool store, where you'll find everything for your cooking needs. Books, aprons, utensils, and much, much more. Here's another fun fact about Limoilou. It has its own mascot, a wolf. You'll find it in the window of Article 721. It's a small clothing and accessory store featuring the work of many local artists. If you're looking for a unique souvenir from illustrations to jewelry, Article 721 is a must. If you like to start your day with specialty coffee, well, Nectar is where I go in Limoilou. With three locations across the region, it's where you'll enjoy the many subtleties of the third wave coffee movement in Quebec City. Constantin, thank you so much for having me. It's a great pleasure. Um, Nectar in Limoilou, why would you decide to open up shop here? Well, Limoilou is, is a place where people enjoy to live, I think. So they really like to, to make all this place like uh, pleasant for, for them to live. It's plenty of beautiful spots. Uh, you have uh, places where you can go and just take your time enjoying you know, life and mm -hmm. friends. So we really feel that in our coffee right now. It's, it's a great place for great people to spend time. Would you say that Nectar represents what the third wave movement is all about? Yeah, well, the third wave movement, it's all about discovering where does coffee come from, uh, how is it processed, and uh, Nectar adds its own flavor to this approach by taking the time uh, to make the, the customer understand how all this process works so he can uh, taste great coffee, he can also understand how it's made mm -hmm. and after that he builds like his own profile about what he likes, what he doesn't like and mm -hmm. he can afterwards uh, continue to discover. So every time a customer uh, enters here he uh, he has this feeling that we we can tell a story, we can describe what we are selling them, and this yeah. is the same thing for pretty much every uh, business in Limoilou. Yeah, we like that human approach, right? Exactly. That's, uh, that, I think, is what would describe Limoilou pretty yeah, well. Exactly. And what's interesting about that is that every day you offer a découverte, so you promote a special coffee with different flavor profiles that you offer for a, a minimal price, but still interesting where you give your customer the opportunity to be a little bit more creative and discover something new. Yeah, you know, you, you can take, for example, a Kenyan coffee, which is washed processed. So it, it has this very clean flavor, which is almost like tea. Mm -hmm. And the day after, same customer can come here and taste a uh, Panamian coffee, which has been natural processed, which means that uh, the pulp was left on the cherry uh, 
bit longer and this imparts a very fruity savor like raisins or uh, strawberries to the coffee. That's crazy. A whole range of different flavors yeah. in just one little bean. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Great. It was great for and me. And you know what? Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> good day. You too. Cheers to you too. Walking in Limoilou, look up. You'll notice a very distinctive architectural style. Brick buildings with outdoor staircases and an interesting industrial design that's recycled and integrated into the balustrades. Can you tell what it is? Yeah, Quebec loves hockey. Limoilou is undergoing a complete transformation. That's due mainly to gentrification. But the neighborhood is now seen as a family-friendly, urban, dynamic community where residents have a strong sense of belonging. No wonder Limoilou is a hub for small neighborhood bistros with just enough audacity. I highly encourage you walk around the many green alleys to get to one destination to another. How about Mexico City as a destination? By way of the flavors of the marginal and very charming La Taqueria. Chef and owner Carlos Angulo revives his childhood memories inside his tiny taco factory of La Quatrième Avenue. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Alison. Thank you for taking the time to speak with Thank me you today. For visiting us. I love your place. It's kind of oh. it has this great vibe within Limoilou. How how does this all fit in? Limoilou is a neighborhood very dynamic. I chose Limoilou because I think it's a it's a place to be. Yeah. Please open something, bring to the people something new, something different, and the people uh, answer very well. Tell me a little bit about the community. What is the sense that we feel here in Limoilou? We feel like a big family. Yeah. The people know, uh, know the, the people, the people want to, to visit our, our business and uh, share with other people the, the, the discovery of that business. How does La Taqueria fit in then? A taqueris is, uh, is, is different, it's new, it's <laughs> trendy maybe, and the people love that because many people go to Mexico and yeah. when they come back here, come to visit us. Where are you sending us to? Where do we travel to in Mexico? Mexico City. <laughs> Straight there? <laughs> Straight there. <laughs> Downtown Mexico City. Yeah, it's a little place, little place in Mexico, a little corner of Mexico here in Limalu. <laughs> really? And people coming here, hey, it's, it's like the taqueria in Mexico. For me, it's a uh, an awards. Yeah. Atacar well. uh, means uh, a taco place, a little bit, a little factory to make tacos, and the tacos is the, the cuisine of the Rio in Mexico. is very popular. is the is the sandwich, the Mexican sandwich. Mm -hmm. that I want to bring to the people in Quebec and Limolu uh, something original, something authentic. It's my part of, uh, of my share for them. Mm -hmm. You're putting your heart on the plate. I love that. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. I really appreciate Carlos' genuine food. It's served with an extra side of pleasure, Limoilou style, especially in the homemade horchata. Limoilou is a safe place to walk around at any given time of day. Walk back along La Troisième Avenue to feel the evening vibe of the neighborhood. Plan l'apéro at Cendrillon. It's a vibrant and trendy neighborhood eatery where mixology is taken very seriously. Jeffrey, thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. So how much of a fantasy is Le Cendrillon? Uh, Le Cendrillon, it's not called that way because of the fairy tale. It's called that way because of a restaurant uh, that what, that used to be on the corner of that street right there at where the Stratos restaurant is. Uh, it was like the icon of uh, the Limoilou area uh, in the 70s and the 60s. Uh, it was the pretty much the only restaurant that they have in this area. And it was the, the place where all the hockey players from the Nordic really? went after the game to have a beer and smoke cigarettes and stuff they do so in the So you're paying homage to what happened to the 70s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit if you want to. about that vibe from Le Cendrillon. How does Limoilou come inside yeah. your restaurant? Uh, but we're, we're, we're pretty young and uh, two of my partners live like just behind and in front of the restaurant so close and uh, we do uh, everything uh, by foot. We go at the bank right there, we buy the bread that way and we do, we buy the pretty much 
the most we can on the street right here. So, yeah. what does La Cendrillon taste like? What's your oh ultimate my God. My, first of deal? All, <laughs> first of all, every everything is made here. So we we do our own charcuterie. Though, so we're a curd meat bar if you want to. Uh, we're also uh, oyster bar. So we do we have plenty of variety of oysters. We have a charcoal grill as well, so we can grill some oysters on top of it, which is a specialty here. Uh, awesome cocktails too. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. All right. We have a bar chef here named Charles. He's really, really good, uh, and he works different product, and he's he's really inventive. So I really, uh, okay. really love uh, the cocktail we do here. So oh, it's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we want to get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. We're here to have a cocktail. We want to share some awesome drinks with you. Yeah. What do you propose? Uh, I think we're going to do two cocktails. We're going to do uh, a new cocktail from last week that Charles uh, like. Create. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, the Green Yoda. Uh, you, you'll see it. It's a really good cocktail. And we're gonna do our uh, our Bloody Caesars, uh, which is the biggest seller we have here. Pretty I'm nice thirsty seller. already. Yeah, Jeffrey, so, shall we uh, go you for it? Go, yeah, right away. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah. So uh, what I'm making right now is a uh, Green Negroni. It's called the Master Yoda. Uh, it's a mix of gentian uh, liqueur, and to replace the gin, uh, I'm gonna use uh, grappa. Uh, I'll finish it with uh, white vermouth from uh, Rouge Gorge, uh, which is a uh, vermouth of apple from Quebec, and I'm just gonna top it with some cava, which is sparkling wine. I'm gonna stir it with ice, and after that, I'm just gonna pour it on top of a big ice, and I'll finish it with a twist of lemon. The other cocktail I'm making, it's a Bloody Caesar. The principal ingredients are made here. So we do our own uh, English sauce, uh, the Worcestershire sauce. Uh, we uh, make our own spicy sauce with bourbon and uh, peaches, and also lacto-fermented finger hot pepper. It's aged six months in our uh, own uh, oak barrel. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a really, really good uh, spicy sauce. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put uh, the uh, rimmer, which is a mix of spice. I'm gonna add some ice, uh, put our mix uh, of uh, English sauce, uh, pickle juice, uh, marinated onion juice, and lime juice. And after that, I'll add the vodka. I'm gonna use pure vodka, which is a Quebec vodka tonight, the Clamato. And uh, I'll finish with the little brochette uh, of uh, uh, our own charcuterie, which is a dry sausage of cognac and coffee, uh, marinated onions, some jerkins pickle, classic green olives, uh, add a cucumber with salt and pepper, and the oysters on top with horseradish, lemon, and spicy sauce. Cheers to you and cheers to Limoilou. Thank you for watching this episode of A Foodie Guide to Quebec City. I'm Alison Van Rassel. I've got so much more to share with you because we're going to go through Saint Roch, Saint Sauveur, and Saint Jean Baptiste. Oh, so much more to make you salivate for because I want you to discover Quebec City by walking and by eating just like locals do. See you around.